Hey everyone, welcome to the American Jedi channel. Today we're going to be doing a review of the most recent next-gen controllers for the next-gen systems. Well, two next-gen systems and one Nintendo Switch. <laughs> and which I'll argue is a next-gen system actually. And uh, to compare the sizes, I have, you know, a unit of measurement that everyone is familiar with. One clump of moss. So there you go. In a seashell. Can't forget the seashell because that does add dimensions. So, anyways, let's uh let's start off what we got here. Let's look at what we got. We've got a blue PlayStation 5 Dual Sense controller. We've got a Halo Infinite Master Chief Edition 117. Xbox, I would say it's an Xbox Elite Series 2, Microsoft Elite Series 2 controller, special edition. We also have a special edition Nintendo Switch Pro controller. This is a uh, Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak edition. See the little bats and stuff. The little. Nope. Let's look at the let's look at the Halo one. This one's pretty cool, actually. It's super heavy. You can tell it's made out of good materials, solid materials, soft in the places that need to be soft, sturdy, and uh, metal in the places that should be metal. I mean, it just it feels really good. Well, I guess it's all plastic, but some some pieces are metal. Like that's metal. <laughs> and then on the back, you do have um, you know the thing that's on the back of uh, Master Chief's helmet, a little metal player with one one seven on it. Of course, I've got the extra buttons, extra triggers on here, which I don't use. And then you got the PS5 controller. This is just your standard. It's just blue. You know, it's pretty new that they came out with colors. I'd say within, well, I only noticed it within the last month, but it might have been, might have been newer than that or older than that, but I don't know. But anyways, so which of these controllers is the best? Well, let's talk about the functions of each. This is, uh, they're all wireless, of course. Um, this controller here is an Elite Series 2 controller. It's supposed to uh, have upgraded triggers. And the triggers can be set via these little switches here. Right here where my thumb is. You can... I have it on the lowest setting, which is it's going to... As soon as I pull the trigger, it fires. See that? And then you can put it on the highest setting where you have to have a squeeze. And then it will squeeze down and fire like that. See how it changes it? Or you could do the medium. Or you could do the short like I like. So, and then another thing about that is adjustable triggers. There is software that works with your Xbox. Um, so when you connect this to your Xbox, uh, it will recognize in their software where you can change the mapping of the buttons and the triggers and everything else. The extra triggers on the back. So um, it does have default settings, which do make sense. So... But, um, yeah, if you want to learn how to use the triggers on the back so you'll be a little quicker, you know, when you're crouching or laying down as you're shooting, like in Modern Warfare or Call of Duty or whatever. Um, some people swear they can get a lot quicker by learning these. I don't use them because they just confuse me. Oh, look at that one. That one is not in the right place. Yes. So, so let's summarize what this has. It is a rechargeable controller. These are all rechargeable controllers and wireless. This is rechargeable, comes with a dock where it sits on the dock and charges like that. It also does have a USB-C connection on top to charge it that way. It does work with PC and the Xbox One, Xbox Series X, Xbox Series S. Um, let's see, programmable software, programmable buttons and triggers, adjustable tension on the triggers. You also have adjustable tension on the sticks that comes with the tool um, in the box. Let me grab that real quick. Let's go ahead and walk on over to where the box is. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Would you look at that? Oh, my God. So sexy. Okay, let's go back this way. You ain't with UNSC. Yeah, you know me. So let's see. 
Let's go in here. There should be a key. Yes, there it is. It's this little thing here that looks like that. And then you pop these off, I believe. And then you can stick this little key down in this thing right here and give that a turn. And then what that'll do is adjust the tension, how hard it is to push these around. And you can do it on both things. You can also, um, it's gonna be a little more in depth on this controller because there's a lot you can do with it. Uh, you can also switch it out your thumb pads. You can change out your D-pad if you don't like that little fancy modern looking one. You can also change the height of your thumbsticks. So you could have like a, you know, extremely high thumbstick. Let's see if this is one of them. Oh, it's a short one. Let's see if we can get a high one here. Yeah, so that's a higher one. So this one, if I replaced it here, this one would sit higher now. See, see how that sits higher? So if I wanted to play like that where my left thumb's elevated and my right thumb is down here, then, you know, that's an option if you feel comfortable like that. I just, I left it alone because I'm used to playing on a standard Series X controller. Um, so I'm just used to playing on an Xbox controller generally. Um, my last PlayStation was a PlayStation 2. I had never owned the PlayStation 3. Well, okay, in all honesty, I stopped buying PlayStations and when the PlayStation after the PlayStation 2 came out. I didn't buy the PlayStation 3. I didn't buy the PlayStation 4 until I already had an Xbox One. So I kind of stopped my PlayStation fandom at PlayStation 2. So anyways, getting off track here. Looking at this controller, it's, it's really hefty. It's solid, reliable. You'll be playing this on many years to come. It just looks really special i think these are going used so like this one right here with this kit and the original box i could easily uh and the docking station and the cable everything i could easily get 300 dollars used and this is in excellent condition hey, you want to buy it no i'm just kidding not for sale anyways so we got programmable buttons we've got uh you know adjustable thumbsticks tensions there's just so many things you can do with this controller, right? Awesome controller. And the fact that it's rechargeable, you even have different channels that you can set. If uh, you're experiencing any lag in your game, you can change the frequency by just hitting this button here, and it'll change the frequency that it's using to get contact to the Xbox. All right, moving on. Nintendo Switch controller. This does some pretty cool stuff. It has, uh, unlike the Xbox controller, it does have um, you know, a gyroscope. It senses, you know, when you're turning things, uh, just like the Joy-Cons. The Joy-Cons are a little more accurate and a little better rumble, I think. But this does still have the HD rumble. Uh, this is the Nintendo-branded Pro Controller. There's a lot of generics and fakes out there. So uh, one way that you can tell is if the NFC chip reader, which is right here, that's where I place my Amiibos is right here. Some, I can't remember. I think it's the Joy-Cons where you got to put it on the bottom right thumbstick. But I collect Amiibos, and so I enjoy scanning them into various games. So I enjoy having a controller that's a lot like the Xbox controller that I'm used to. You know, you've got the, the thumb up here and the thumb down here. So you've got that kind of little um, diagonal setup going on as opposed to the PlayStation where you're, you know, even Steven on that, on the, on the thumbsticks. So, you know, I've been playing Xbox since the Xbox original came out, and I've been kind of stuck on that system. I would play PlayStation every once in a while at a friend's house or whatever, but I'm really used to the Xbox controller a lot. And, uh, yeah, so we'll see which one's my favorite, though. Going on, so the Switch does have, um, is also wireless rechargeable by via USB-C. The, the triggers and bumpers are really short clicky. So like, you know, I've got the, the trigger 
tension on these as tight as they get so that it's you know has a short stop before the button activates but these are already at that point like you don't even have to set it up so i like that some people might want a squishier trigger because they're very short but i actually like that that's you know and the bumper is a bumper i mean it, it does the same as any other bumper it doesn't light up or anything there are lights on the bottom to signify what player you are you know first or fourth player there's a charging button on the top and a connection thing that I've never had to use because typically on a pro controller to set it up, you just connect the, the USB-C cable to the USB-A outlet on the switch and it recognizes the console and connects to the console and then you can, you know, disconnect it and then you'll be wireless. Uh, HD rumble, uh, NFC capabilities so you can scan Amiibos. This is just an awesome controller, uh, awesome controller. Moving on to the dual sense. This is, I'm surprised wasn't created in collaboration with Nintendo because there are a bunch of cool things on here. Um, not only is it, you know, gyro, like it can sense which way you're tilting it. It also has a microphone right there on my thumb. It has a mute button, the PlayStation button, the home button, which is similar to the Xbox button on here and the uh, home button on here. Um, and you've got your two, two sticks, you've got a sensor pad that senses movement and you can also push it. It's also an extra button. You've got like a, a, a media share button here. I forget what the, you know, their, their term for it, but it's a media. And then you got kind of like a, a information or star button on the right side. On the back, nothing really going on. You can connect it to USB-C. It also has uh, charging points on the bottom, so you can set it in uh, one of the numerous charging cradles. I have the Sony branded cable that looks like the system. You just set it down in there and it charges. Uh, as far as battery life is concerned, I would say I get the best battery life out of this one. Um, not surprising, it's pretty, pretty hefty uh, controller, pretty, you know, Pretty heavy, so I would think that this one probably has a bigger battery than the Switch one. But yeah, I definitely get the better. It's between these two for sure, but I'm pretty sure, because I play the Xbox, have been playing the Xbox the most um, before, and now I'm currently playing the Switch the most. But I just got a PS5, so I'm thinking I'm going to start playing that the most. So, um But it's definitely between these two. You know, they I think they're rated, the Switch controller's rated about 40 hours. Same as the Xbox, and I think the PlayStation is about 20 hours or something like that. It's pretty low. I've already had to charge this once, and I literally just got my PS5 like two or three days ago. So I've already had to... I've, well, I've charged it initially full battery, so I ran through full battery, and now I'm on the second battery charge. So anyways, going on with the DualSense, it has uh, a really cool ability. See how these triggers travel like this? Well, the game can tell it, hey, stop here, stop here, you know, stop at different points. And so, for example, I was playing Astro uh, Playroom, Astro's Playroom, which comes for free with the PS5. And I was, I was grabbing something that I could break by pulling the trigger too tight. And I could feel in the trigger like, okay, that's about as tight as I can grab it. Because if I go anymore, it's going to snap and break. And the controller will get to that point where you could tell like, okay, if I pull this further, it's going to snap it. It's really cool. I, I'd have to say my favorite feature on any controller are these uh, are these uh, responsive triggers that, depending on what you're playing, and this camera, sorry, this is not the zoom is just not that great right now. But depending on what you're playing, you know these triggers, they uh, they adapt their tension, which is really cool and really gets you immersed in the game. So above the PlayStation symbol, the home button, you have a speaker. Which, which can get you into the 3D sound, immersive sound. Uh, it plays like sounds that would typically be heard close to your character, I think, uh, is what I was picking up on. And it made it a lot more immersive. And then the uh, touchpad slash sensor pad. Um, for example, I could zip up the suit that I jumped into in this game. Um, there's different things you can do with it. Uh, and Ghost of Tsushima, I can uh, bow by 
you know, sliding down like this or put my sword away by pushing right. If you push it in, it does something different. Um, as far as the most premium feeling, so that's the PS5 controller. I mean, you can you can blow into it. Like uh, there's this part in the game where you, it makes it works off the wind, off the mic input, where you're blowing into it and it blows your boat, you know, as you're going along. And so it's really cool. The DualSense, uh, you know, for the PlayStation 5 is a really cool controller. The most premium feeling is obviously this one. This one was retailed for $200. And, you know, like I said, they're being exchanged on eBay for 300 used, about 400 450 still in box. The Switch controllers, the Elite Series 2, I believe, right now, the standard edition, that it's just black or all white, I think. I don't remember. I think it's just black. Uh, is 159 so don't think you have to go out and spend that much money to get in a, you know, basically the same heft and same, it works the same way, it's just the skin's different. Uh, these are uh, running about $69. Sometimes you'll see them on sale like on Amazon or Target or something for $59, but yeah, they're about $69. Uh, the best way to play the Nintendo Switch is on a Pro Controller, for sure. And these ones, I believe the white and blacks are $69, and the colored versions are $74.99. So you pay, if you want color like red, blue, you're going to pay a $5 premium. So, okay, now, which one of these is my favorite controller? Hmm. I don't know because I'm a really big Amiibo collector and I love scanning my Amiibos on here. And it's just such a simple controller. Out of the three, this is the simplest controller out of them besides the NFC capability. Um, but out of the three, this is my favorite controller. The DualSense for the PS5. I did never, never did I ever dream that I would say that this is not my preferred way to play a game on anything, on a PC, console, whatever. If I could hook this controller up, you know, to my phone and play games like that and stream from the cloud onto my phone and play games with this controller, I would be very happy because I've been playing on this controller since forever. PlayStation controller is brand new to me. I never liked the PS4 controller. I did own a PS4, like I said earlier, I bought one. Um... Probably about a year or two after I bought an Xbox One, I bought a PS4 and uh, just didn't really play it that much. I like playing the RPGs, Japanese RPGs and stuff like that, but uh, I ended up selling it. I had the VR, the virtual reality and everything, and I just was like, eh. Just the Xbox appealed more to me, the user interface, the online, and it still does. I, I still like the online and the user interface of the Xbox better, but hands down, this is the best console controller ever made, is the DualSense for PlayStation 5. Just looking at the buttons, so this is a, this is a $200 controller retail, right? And this is a $75 controller retail, right? So pushing the buttons, I don't know if you can hear that, but it's satisfying, it's satisfying, you know? It's, and this part is cold because it's metal, this, this part around the, the buttons is metal, so when you're touching it, you feel the metal, you know, but on a normal uh, Xbox controller, if we go pick one of those up, let's go, let's go head over there. Let's make the long journey. Let's, let's steal this from Darth Vader back there. Hi, Darth, what are you doing? All right. Let's go back this way. Never mind my trash on the floor over here. All right, so here is a Series X controller. This came with my Xbox Series X. Um, I don't know why I was out of focus for so long. Jeez, man. Maybe there's something on my camera lens. But yeah, so sorry about that, guys. But hey, we're here for the content, right? Quality content to keep you entertained. So this is. Uh, the Series X controller, sorry, it's kind of dirty, you know, it's, it hasn't honestly been used that much because I've had the Elite controller for a while, but you can tell, like, you know, the buttons, okay, yeah, these ones are kind of nice, these ones, these ones are smaller, yeah, look how big those are compared to these, these ones are smaller, 
So let's compare let's compare apples to apples, shall we? So feel that, feel that. Okay. It's kind of it's kind of crunchy a little bit, you know? Just a little crunchy. Let me go over here to the PlayStation. Ooh. It's quiet. Smooth. It's uh, a little squishy. It's pleasant to push. I feel like if I had to tap a button really quick. It's my pro gamer finger right there. I think. I think I could do it on the PlayStation quicker. I don't know. But yeah, so they're both great controllers, but the DualSense can just do so much more. Like this standard controller, I can't lock the triggers like on the Elite. Um, it's just a squishy trigger pull, which some people like, because I mean, that's been the Xbox thing for a while, is a squishy trigger pull. Um, it's got stiples on it now. We're stipling for extra grip. Uh, this lights up on here, whereas in the PS5, this little bar that goes around here lights up. Um, I don't know, there's a share button, kind of like, you know, um, to instantly share, kind of like your start button. Uh, I forget what this button does, but I don't really use those buttons that often. But yeah, the DualSense is just, has crappy battery life. It's my only gripe about it. I wish it lasted as long as uh, the Xbox or the Switch controller. It has crappy battery life, but... It's got a lot going on on the inside, you know. It's got a microphone. It's got a. It's got a speaker. It's got, you know, these tactile triggers that that uh, the game can make tighter, the tension tighter, and snap even. Um, it's just the best controller out there. So, if you are, uh, you know, considering a new system between these three guys, you know, the Nintendo Switch. Oh, I wanted to argue why I thought a Switch was uh, a next-gen system. So, okay, yeah, sure. It's not going to be the strongest graphics. It's not going to be, it's not going to even compete with an Xbox One, which is a last-gen system. But these things, especially the OLEDs that just came out, these things are amazing. And actually, before I got my PS5, I was playing this the most, which I'm actually going to get back into this playing. There's a Pikmin game that I want to beat, a Mario Kart game, and I want to beat a Street Fighter game as well. So there's a lot going on here with the Switch. It's definitely next gen. The way that you can take it out of the dock and just play it on the go right from where you were playing or put it back in the dock and it throws it up on your TV. All the different things you can do with it, like scanning Amiibos and uh, playing online against people. It's definitely a next-gen system. may not be next-gen graphics, but it's definitely a next-gen console. So that's my argument for that. Well, anyways, thanks for watching, and I hope you have a good day. And you guys take care out there. Make sure to pick the right controller for you.